Okay. Moving on. Okay. Okay. Uh, share screen. Share one. Okay. So cardiovascular microbial diseases of cardiovascular lymphatic systems. Okay. So thank you, virus, which is kind of cool. All right. So. This one we will skip. Okay. Uh, well, well. Okay. okay. So this is a lymphatic system. Okay. Um, so you should reveal how all this stuff works. Um, the only thing that they didn't mention in anatomy and microbiology or physiology is this thing called bubos. Bubos are um, usually like swollen lymph nodes that are not only swollen, but they're turning in color, uh, which is like brown, black, purplish, okay? All right. So here, okay, um, the lymphatic system is really valuable for the working of the immune system because B cells and T cells work in the lymphatic system, okay? Okay, so learn objectives. Okay, so septicemia, um, okay, is growth of bacteria um, in the blood. Okay, uh, sepsis, um, okay, septic shock um, is the definition of septic shock. Okay, first of all, okay, well, you have. Um, inflammation fluid flows out of the uh, blood vessels into the surrounding area if that happens a lot okay so except sepsis um, you will get decreased blood pressure okay and decreased blood pressure will mean that there's not enough blood going to um, organs um, severe amounts of sepsis can result in septic shock. Septic shock is uncontrollable, decreased blood pressure, and can actually kill you. Hello, 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 hello. All right, sorry about that. I think they went into mute function. Um, okay, gram negative sepsis. Okay, um, okay, uh, also known as endotoxin shock. Um, so, endotoxin shock basically is um, where when you lice open the bacteria and kill it, um, the, the LPS, the lipopolysaccharides, actually cause a more severe problem. Um, then in this case, antibiotics can worsen by killing bacteria. Um, okay, uh, treatment involves neutralizing the LPS and the inflammatory cytokines. Okay. Okay, gram positive sepsis is caused by exotoxins that cause suffering, not the other way around. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, pearl, pearl fever or childbirth fever or childbed fever um, is caused by streptococcus pyrogenes. Okay, it's transmitted to the mother and her childbirth. It infects the uterus, okay, um, and eventually the whole entire abdominal cavity, which is called parent uh, peritonitis. Okay, um, one of the most 
famous cases is um, Queen Jane of England. She was the one who was married to, or one of Henry VIII's uh, six wives, and she died giving birth to the heir, uh, Edward, um, Edward the fourth, third, uh, no, second, no. Six, or something like that. Doesn't matter. One of the Greek kings in England. Um, okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Infections of the heart. Okay. Uh, um, the heart has a myocardium, endocardium, and pericardium. One that the two things that you have in the endocardium and the pericardium inside and the outside. Okay, okay. Endocarditis is an inflammation of endocardium. Uh, endocardium, okay, um, causes inflammation of the valves. Okay, um, let me see, there's a good picture. Endocarditis. So um, these things, um, if the valves don't work, then the blood flow is through. Uh, Okay. Okay. Um, caused by alpha hemolytic streptococci from oral or tonsil infection. A lot of times, for some reason, um, the, the the infection of the mouth actually causes inflammation, endocarditis in the heart. Okay, or not a lot, but there there is definitely a link um, there. Okay. Um, acute bacterial endocarditis. Okay. Uh, Staph aureus. Okay. Okay. Uh, pericarditis is caused by streptococcus, inflammation of the pericardial sac. Okay. Uh, what medical procedures? Um, oral procedures. Okay. Mouth. Okay. Okay. Rheumatic fever. Is an autoimmune complication of uh, asparagines. Okay. okay. Um, for some reason, um, this happens. Okay, because it causes um, the asparagines causes the auto um, immune function. Okay, which causes inflammation of the heart valves. Okay. All right, pseudoremia spread by rabbits um, and other stuff, but like rabbits. Um, pseudoremia is a gram negative rod. This is a disease. Okay, um, creates the ulcer at the site of entry. Okay, uh, these guys, uh, the bacteria, um, they can actually cause. Uh, You guys should get into the phagocytes and reproduce inside the phagocytes, okay, which is kind of cool. Um, penetration of the skin results in 3% mortality. This is where the portal entry actually matters a lot, okay? If you breathe this shit in, um, the, the mortality is greater than 30%, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, we'll skip this one. Um, okay, I actually will answer this question. Um, anthrax, okay. Uh, anthrax is uh, bacillus anthracticus is gram positive endosporin forming 
uh, rod, it primarily lives in soil. So this is a disease we can never ever get rid of because it lives in soil. Um, it, uh, it primarily affects raising animals. Um, and this is like common, uh, this raising animals, not only do they eat the grass, they churn up the dirt, like they dig through the dirt and churn it up. And so especially when when the, the it's dry, you, you, you see dust clouds of things get in the air, and that's when you, you get a lot of anthrax um, and stuff like that, okay? Okay. Um, okay. These bacteria have a protective antigen that um, that binds to toxins to target cells, which permits their entry. Um, that the toxin causes edema, uh, um, it interferes with phagocytosis. Um, they also produce leukocytins, okay, which actually kills macrophages. Okay. Okay. Again, anthrax is very highly dependent on portal of entry. Okay. Um, inhalation anthrax um, is a near 100% mortality rate. Um, and so that's why they were trying in the, um, the male example, they're trying to kill with anthrax. The whole goal was to not cutaneous, uh, but to get you to open the envelope in such a way that the spores will come out. You see, know, if you open the envelope, you're usually right next to it. And, and honestly, if you open an envelope, your nose is usually right underneath it or above it. And so if you open it, you can spray the anthrax directly into your uh, nasal passages. Okay? This is, this is uh, cutaneous anthrax right here where it's coming through the skin. Okay? You can see large amounts of necrosis. Okay. 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 Ischemia, um, gangrene. So, some ischemia. Ischemia is a loss of blood supply to the tissue. Okay. Um, ischemia, not only does it just result in hypoxia, it, it, it um, it's much worse than that because what happens if you cut off the blood supply, there's no outflow. There's no outflow, there's no release, there's no washing away of the toxins, and they build up and kill the cell very quickly. And instead of hypoxia, um, the cells usually end up in apoptosis. Necrosis is a death of tissue abnormally, so what you get is that shit spreading everywhere. The cell is kind of dies and everything is spread and it can cause more and more cell death. Okay. Okay. And because they're calling because the cells are dying and, and as they're dying, they're spreading their junk around. Um, one of the treatments for necrosis is to kill off the cells by cutting off the necrotic tissue, okay, and um, like even cutting through the borders and like making sure that that, that doesn't spread, okay? Um, okay, and so gangrene is caused by crescidium, perforating the gram positive in a form of anaerobic rod, okay? So uh, obviously you need to cut off the blood supply and the blood supply brings in oxygen. So you, if there is no blood supply, um, okay, uh, that can, the area will die and, and it can cause gas getting green, okay? Um, and you see this happen a lot with diabetes patients in the later stages, okay? Because what happens in the later stages is their their uh, capillaries their blood becomes thicker the capillaries start degrading and they lose capillaries and lose capillaries means losing oxygen which means uh, clostridium uh, perforation can get in okay 
Okay, hyperbaric chambers are effective in treating that because they bring in oxygen. Like, that's the whole definition of hyperbaric, right? High levels of oxygen, okay? All right. Okay. Uh, cat scratch disease. Um, in fact, cat red blood cells. Um, so, uh, cat claws are contaminated with human uh, or feces. Right, humans and they and they bring in. Um, this is one of the reasons why, like, uh, pregnant women are less supposed to have cats. Okay. Uh, red light fever will skip. Okay. 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 Play. Um, one of my favorite diseases is talking about caused by Jason. Uh, you asked this. Okay. Uh, okay. Gram negative rod transmitted by rat fleas. Okay, it's endemic to rats, ground squirrels, fairy dogs. Um, what happens is um, this bacteria it feed, it it grows inside a rat. Okay. And as fleas feed on this, what was the first response is, is it blocks the flea's digestive tract. Okay, the flea's digestive tract. So now the flea has a blockage in its digestive tract. It really doesn't know that there's a blockage in the digestive tract. It knows that it's hungry. Okay, it knows whatever it's trying to feed on somehow is still not full and, and making it more and more hungry. As it gets more and more hungry, it gets more, more and more desperate to like bite things and feed. Okay. That's why it fleas that usually don't get on humans or don't or attract to humans, they actually end up biting humans because they're so like they're, they're like driven kind of crazy by hunger and so they bite whatever they land on and that includes humans. And eventually what happens suddenly is there they a release of, of, of the blockage and they, they, they puke up, like they realize something's blocking their throat and they puke up everything right as they bite and, and that stuff gets inside a human um, and gets into the lymph nodes, okay? Okay. Okay, that um, can lead to the bubonic pain. The bubonic plague is a bacterial growth in the flooding lymph. This is the most common type of plague. It is a 50 to 75 percent mortality rate. Okay, this is one of um, the the people who actually survive plague um, have this form. Okay, um, the septicemic plague. Uh, I think it's something like 80-90% survival mortality rate. Pneumonic plague um, is where you're almost certainly dead. Um, and I think it, I'm pretty sure this is the one that kills you very, very quickly, um, like within a day. Um, antibiotic prolapses for exposure, okay, um, to plague. Uh, but even with um, antibiotics, if you get plague, your chances of dying are something like one in four. It's pretty high. Okay. Fortunately, we don't have a lot of plague anymore. But plague used to, like, you know, rampage in the Western. Obviously, rampage in Western Europe a couple of times. Okay, especially during the Middle Ages, it infected the Chinese empires, it infected the Roman Empire um, at a really critical stage. 
Um, I know the role of someone called Justinian. Okay, that was a very first, very clear sense of plague. Um, so, uh, it was used, uh, plague was also the first um, classified biological weapon used. It was used by the Mongols, um, who basically took plague infected people and shot them over the walls. Um, and, and so, basically, the story is the Mongols were, were besieging the city. And they were losing. And, and there was a plague that went through their army. And so their army was dying. And they realized, and by then, like, they understood that if there was a disease that was spreading, the best thing you can do is to get away from the disease and spread out. So they, they realized, okay, that they were losing this, losing the battle um, to the city. And, you know, they had to leave. And basically, as a final FU, they decided to just, you know, catapult all, all their dead people over the, the city walls and then leave. And that's what they did. Okay. Um, after that, okay, what happened was the people in the city also knew better. They're like, dude, they just shot a bunch of dead bodies that are diseased by, you know, people with like these huge boobos and, and stuff that must not be good. So, you know what, we are, like, now they're gone, we are leaving too. And we're trying to go get as far away from this as much as we can. Okay. Unfortunately, um, what happened was there, there was a bunch of people there who were people from Venice. Venice at that time were, uh, as a very powerful city, were full of traders. Okay. And so they went around and they traded stuff. This was in Turkey, and then they decided, hey, you know what, let's go home to Italy. And they brought the plague with them. And that plague that they brought with them wiped out one third of Western Europe. Okay, so just to be pretty stark about what that means, we're in the middle of a pandemic where we, we, we've lost 200,000 out of 300 million. Okay, uh, so 0.1% roughly. Okay, this wiped out one third of Western Europe. So imagine going through cities where you had less than half the people who were there two weeks ago still alive. Okay, so imagine literally in your neighborhood half the people being dead. Um, and half the people be dead because the other half were, were sick. Um, they had to spend time burying dead people. They had to spend time taking care of the sick and dying. And so your whole economy collapses and stuff. Okay, not, you know, that also ends up killing more people. So that disease spreading through Western Europe, you know, literally um, wiped out most of Western Europe. And, and in fact, one of the cool things about it, you know, in a morbid way, is it, you can literally see that in the population of the world decreasing. You can also see that in the climate changing because there are some fewer people and stuff like that. It's actually a very, very cool um, epidemiological study. Okay. Okay. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is Lyme disease. Okay, um, Lyme disease, uh, unfortunately, is one of these diseases that are increasing in population or increasing in, in number. Um, it's spread by ticks. Okay, uh, they're called deer ticks. Okay, uh, um, this stuff, uh, they feed on mice, they feed on humans, but they feed primarily on deer. Um, but they're not infecting themselves. Uh, they, they feed on the blood of the deer and they pick up the uh, bacteria and then they, um, they don't, it doesn't have any effect on them and, and they, um, as it takes move on to humans, 
um, they can transfer it to humans. And so, here, okay. Uh, Lyme disease was named after Lyme, Connecticut, where it was originally discovered, um, but it's spreading throughout the U U.S. now. Um, the seasonal changes that are due to climate change are making it worse, okay. Yeah, Lyme disease. What the good thing about Lyme disease um, is this thing. Um, this is called a bullseye rash. Okay. Um, my friend got Lyme disease last year, actually. Um, and he, he, my first question was, uh, do you have a bullseye rash? And I said, yep. Um, so he showed me his bullseye rash. It looks exactly like that. Okay. Um, his treatment was six weeks of antibiotics. Um, I also, in the past, lost one of my uh, um, client plus friends to, to Lyme disease. So it kind of sucks um, that, you know, it it spread into her brain and eventually uh, she died because of it. Okay. So, Lyme disease, so second phase. Uh, third phase, um, first phase, multi rash flu like symptoms. Sometimes you miss the rash, sometimes the rash is not there, and the rest of it flu like symptoms. You, you usually probably pass it off as a flu. Uh, uh, the second phase, um, face paralysis, um, encephalitis, uh, memory loss, memory fog, um, and stuff like that. Uh, third phase arthritis due to uh, inflammatory response. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Typhus. Okay. Typhus is caused by rickettsia, okay? Um, these guys uh, infect the endothelial cells of the vascular system, okay? Um, they can also be um, treated by blah, so they be carried by lice. Uh, they can also be carried by um, uh, I just want to see how far I am oh, I want to be here. Uh, typhus is spread by um, lice, etc. Um, and other uh, vectors, okay. Um, okay. Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain spot of fever, uh, ticks, etc., etc. Okay. Um, I won't go into much detail about this. Okay. It is not the same as typhoid. Okay. So make sure you don't confuse the two. Okay. Okay, Brickus and Foba, Mono, CMV, okay. Okay, uh, Brickus and Foba, this is Brickus and Foba. Um, it's due to Epstein Barr virus, so human therapy virus 4, okay. Uh, Okay, so although it's not a disease with insect vector, so for some reason having malaria lowers your immune system to uh, Burkitt's lymphoma. Okay, mono, uh, infectious mononucleosis, otherwise simply known as mono, otherwise simply known as the kissing disease, etc. etc. Okay, um, okay, so uh, they replicate in resting memory B cells. 
I mean, you can look at them and they have like uh, weird looking nuclei in them. Okay. Um, so you can see. Uh, This weird looking bilobe nucleus, okay, as well as this regular. Um, okay. Oh, sorry, this A one, this is oh, this is the um, unusual lobe nucleus here. This is the regular one. Okay. Okay, I've seen bar. Okay, cycle megalovirus. Okay, um, or CMV. Okay, uh, show you a picture. Okay, uh, let's get this. Let's get the big picture of climate change, etc. Basically, climate change is introducing um, more pathogens into our system. Um, quicker, okay. Okay, no fever, dengue fever. Uh, okay. Barber, okay. Um, immersion viral hemorrhagic fevers. Marburg virus, Lassa, uh, Lassa virus, Ebola, um, all of these are, are very similar viruses. Basically, all they, they do very similar things. They get into the bloodstream and they cause massive, massive amounts of bleeding. Okay, the mortality rate for Ebola is um, 90%. Okay, um, it causes massive amounts of bleeding. And, and the whole purpose, the, bl the blood contains Ebola virus, and then, you know, if, if someone else is bleeding, you someone cleaning up after him, uh, wiping up the blood, okay, uh, wiping up the sheets, washing the sheets, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that is what spreads Ebola, okay? Okay, so you're literally bleeding out every orifice, etc., etc. Okay. 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 Uh, China's disease. Um, Trypanosoma cruzi. Um, so. The Vector is actually a bug, I'm called a kissing bug, because they have a tendency to um, kiss, um, not kiss you, but bite you near your lips, and, and that, um, that's why it's called a kissing bug, okay. Okay. The trypanosome gets inside the bloodstream and starts replicating inside the blood, yeah. Okay. Okay. Ow. Uh, toxoplasmosis. Okay. Uh, caused by toxoplasmosis. Okay. Um, these guys are cat feces. Um, so. Um, the primary the primary danger is congenital infection, which causes stillbirth or neuro neurological damage. Okay, um, this is one of the, this is the main reason actually you pregnant women shouldn't have cats, and if even if they if they do have cats, like you know, you can't you know some some people become very attached to their pets and you know they can't get rid of their pets even if they are pregnant. Then if that's the case, then you are not the one scooping up the uh, feces out of litter. Uh, because scooping up the feces out of litter is what still introduces actual plasmosis.
Okay. Malaria caused by plasmodium is transmitted by uh, mosquitoes. Okay, so I'm showing you guys all know all about malaria here. Okay, again, the warmer areas, more mosquitoes. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the mosquito bites transmits the uh, sporozoocyte into the bloodstream. Uh, these guys uh, enter the liver cells, they split. Um, the merozoites enter the bloodstream. These guys affect red blood cells, um, which ruptures the RBCs, okay, um, which causes fever. The lack of red, red blood cells causes chills. So you get this um, weird cycle of plasma uh, chills and fever, okay? Chill fever, chill fever. Uh, because the initial rupture of the red blood cells causes chills. The ru rupture of the red blood cells then causes a inflammatory response, which is a fever, and then back to chills, back to fever. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, plasmodium is very, very good at um, evading the immune response. So the best treatment, okay, uh, chloroquine or hydro hydroxychloroquine. Okay, um, the prevention. Okay, then that's killing off the mosquitoes um, somehow. Um, the another new way is making the the mosquitoes in an area male by genetic uh, mutation and introdu introduction of special um, flies that breed male. Um, so um, the next generation ends up being mostly male and therefore male mosquitoes don't bite you. Okay. This is for bad. Okay. See, so, 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 I asked this. Um, that's a hard word to say. Okay. Um, these guys, okay, are, are caused. Um, so, snails are an intermediate host. Um, so what happens is, look, uh, this guy he can get it through the water um, and stuff like that, or he can even eat the snail. Um, these are intermediate hosts, okay? They get into the bloodstream, they start growing, okay? Then they come out in human feces. Uh, let me show you a picture. I think, oh, oh, I think one of the more grosser things um, okay, so I just wanted to show you what the effects of uh, ingesting these worms. Uh, they, they grow inside your intestines, and you can see it is the, the growth here, um, and stuff like that. And, um, you know, this stuff is from fresh water and, and obviously it causes um, abdominal pain, et cetera, et cetera. Um, dysentery, so you're, you're shitting this stuff out. And, and usually, you know, in, in poor places that is contaminated to the water supply and other people get it. Okay. All right. Stop sharing. Uh, stop recording. I will see you guys for the next uh, section.